Hi there. Welcome to this session on modeling slant columns, walls, and beams. For this session, we are going to create a new project and select the Euro code for that. Modify the first story height to 4 meters and modify the foundation depth to 1 meter. Let's start by creating an array of grid lines, curved ones, columns, beams, slabs, and other members to get started. Create a grid line through the middle. Offset that by 6 meters and rotate along the intersection of the first grid line. Make this value minus 5 degrees. and then create the next few grid lines following the same process. Rotate the last grid line by minus 7.5 degrees. Now, let us update the grid line numbering systems to reflect the horizontal and the vertical correctly. And then we would offset the last grid line to the right. That's grid line four by 1.5 meters. Next, I would create an array of circular columns, beams, and slabs to demonstrate the next few steps. Please take note that I'm utilizing a slab depth of 250 millimeters modeled for a commercial building. The slab thickness that I'm using is 250 millimeters, a dead load of 3.5 kN per square meters, and a live load of 4 kN per square meters. Beam width is 300 with a depth of 600 and column widths are 500 millimeters. Next, I proceed to creating walls. Again, please note that the wall thickness utilized here is 250 millimeters. To create a slant wall, first create along the grid intersections intended. Once created, you can see that there is that gap between the columns and the walls. However, the intention is for the walls to start at the same grid line where the columns are starting. To create that, I'm going to change the origin or the bottom grid lines of the walls to that of the column. Use the icon to select and click on the intended grid line for that. Then, once selected, Notice that there's a change in that grid line, then click on update to see that effect. Now we see the slant wall. Repeat the same process for the other walls to create the desired slant. Next, I would proceed to update this model with the other structural members. Having created those, again, I'll go on to demonstrate the creation of slant walls. The wall property has been defined right here. 
and I'm just going to model to place them. Once created, I'll circle back to the first one, get back to the properties, and I'll select the base grid line for that. Click on update. And I'll repeat that process for the others as well. To create slant columns, it is about the same process. But before we do that, I'd like to show you how to recreate these members at upper levels. Get to the structure tree area and add an additional floor to this model. Once you create the additional floor, you can see the grid lines layout at that level. Get back to the previous level and select all the structural members, but utilize the filter to deselect axis. Once all those members have been selected, right click and select generate members to other stories. See that the selected members only has been checked, which is okay. Then select the target story, which is two in this case, and click okay. Once done, click close. Now on the plan view, we see that we have created exactly similar floor to the one beneath. However, if you look at the 3D model, the model begins to look interesting. Take note that this wall is actually now a transfer wall sitting on top of a beam, as can be seen right there. Now to create a slant column, let us get to the second floor plan. I would like to create a platform at the very front of this building right here, and I would update that with grid lines in a second. Once the desired grid lines have been created, then place the columns. This time around, the columns change to 300 by 600, with the longer side aligned to the vertical axis. As you can see, these columns have been created on the second floor level, and so currently they span only one floor, terminating at the first floor level. However, we will change the span of these columns to two floors spanning from the second floor all the way to the ground floor level to achieve that i'll get back to the plan floor select all those columns and activate the properties on the real-time dialog i'm going to switch over to this length of story click on that and use the column wise edit to change that to two floors and click on ok Again, what we intend is for these columns to slant and have the origin starting from that point while slanting to that point. To achieve that, I'll get back to the plan again, select the first column, right click on that, select properties. And again there, you can see the bottom point of the insertion of this column. We'll switch that bottom point to this intersection right here. Click on the bottom insertion point icon switch over and select that intersection point right there once you have that selected then click on update and now we see that that column has been slant as desired i'll repeat the process for the other columns and there we have these slant columns created now i'll finish the model for the top of that level so there you have it we have successfully created slant walls at two levels with one of them being a transfer wall and then we have created slant columns that span more than one floor slant beams can also be created alongside slant columns and walls in this case planes can be used to achieve these desired slants. To achieve this, I'll switch over to the first floor of this model and I'll create an annex towards the back of this model. 
With that annex, I'll create a plane and then I'll move the members of that plane to that level to demonstrate how to create slant beams. Having created the planes and the additional structural members for the annex, the intention is to have a ramp that connects users from the ground floor all the way to this level and for entry into the first floor. Zooming in, I want you to take note that planes have been defined over all these areas. We have about three planes to help us out with this. And if you take a look at each of these planes, their points have been carefully defined to the desired level. Point three for this plane one, for example, has been set to minus 3,700 millimeters, which is just 300 mm above the ground level. Similar to this area, the level here has been set to minus 2,000 millimeters, which is to demonstrate the half landing level. And finally, this picks up from that level all the way to this level where the values are actually zero, the same as that of the first floor level. I'll now switch over to the 3D view. To properly demonstrate this, we will work simultaneously with the 3D view while we also work with the plan view. Now I'll start with the first plane that has been defined. Select that plane, right click and select move members to plane. We have a warning on the screen. If this is OK for you, click yes. And now within the 3D view, you can see how this ramp has been created. So this is curved at the same time it is slant with the slant beam following suit. Now I'll make the same updates for the half landing to complete this area. I'll switch over to the plan view, select the P2, right click and select move members to plane as well. I'll click on yes. Now I see how that has been achieved again in that 3D view. However, I can see that while that movement was being achieved, this column was also affected. I do not want that. I intend for this column to run all the way to this level. And so I will modify that information there. So I'll select that column, right click and select reset plane definition of members. Yes. And so that column has now been excluded from that setup right there. And the same thing applies to these two and I repeat that process. And now I see that the column has been updated as I desire. Next, I'll move on to plane P3 and I'll repeat the process of moving members to plane. And right there, we see that this process is now complete with the plane members moved to the levels as desired. This is quite tricky to accomplish at times, as you can see, for example, that in this case, I'm here to have a second beam modeled in that level. But with careful planning, you are sure to be able to achieve desired results. A good way to go about that is usually of setting or carefully crafting out your model in such a way that you don't have two levels interacting with each other when you're going to change the plane definition levels.